<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh god, it's here. Oh, my life! My life is finally about to begin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anima. Welcome to Love is Strange. It's a visual novel, actually. A dating sim, in fact. Where you can play as Max and date some of the lovely ladies of Life is Strange. That's right, it's gay as hell! <laughs> and me, being a heteronormative female. Can you smell alive? It smells like fish. We're going to play this game and I'm so excited. Can I just say, congratulations on your musical decisions, dev team. These made, this game is made, these geese geese, these are, it's a pizza, the pizza pie. This game was made by some wonderful folks on the tumbles. Details and link to how to get it and stuff will be in the description. It's just a demo for now, but I am very interested in this and <gasps> let's go. My nipples are hardening already. All I ask is that you shut your door and Put your headphones in because we're gonna be making some noise. Start. Do you wanna play the tutorial? Fuck no! Day one introduces Max to a photo contest at Blackwell Academy. Max can choose Max can choose who she partners with for the photo contest. For demo purposes, we've chosen Chloe as Max's partner. This is day two, Chloe's root! Are you serious? <laughs> Should have played the tutorial. <laughs> the breakfast rush. Oh, look how beautiful it is! Oh, it's gorgeous. Look, I love it. Uh, the breakfast rush at the Two Wells Diner always takes me by surprise, even though I've been coming here since I was a kid. Oh my god, the atmosphere is always electric. The frantic energy of the bustling staff. The impatient, hungry truckers perched at the lunch counter like hulking churlish birds on a wire! The sleepy locals slumped in their booths of steaming mugs of coffee. I've been nursing my own coffee for 10 minutes now. This morning I woke up to a text Chloe sent at 2am asking me to meet her at the diner at 8 sharp breakfast. She's late of course. BITCH! I should probably be more annoyed than this, but I'm kinda used to it. Chloe tries, but she's never been able to keep to a schedule. No. <laughs> oh, subscribe. <laughs> It's kind of a miracle she manages to make it to her classes on time, most days. I suppose this means I should be more worried about asking Chloe of all people to help me with my entry for the photo contest. Oh my god. But Chloe's never let me down when I needed her. Not ever. And she's not starting today. I can't stop the smile that spreads across my face when Chloe enters the diner. BAM! Surprise, bitch. She scans the room, panting a little, looking disheveled. Aw, did she rush over here? You big old queer. When her eyes light on mine, her face breaks out into a grin of its own, and she makes a beeline toward our booth. Oh my god! Oh, the artwork's nice! Hey, Chloe Price! Hey, sorry I'm late. That's not what she sounds like. <laughs> I should get the- should fucking Ashley, I should get the voice actress over here. God. Hey, sorry I'm late. I'm not gonna try and do her voice because it's got this mystical quality to it that I don't have. She slides into the booth with effortless cool, shooting me her most charming apologetic smile. <laughs> you mad? Livid. I am livid. I'm completely livid. Yes, no, sort of- No, I love you. I laugh, shaking my head and taking a sip of my coffee. <laughs> Max is cute! This is actually pretty punctual for you. I'm impressed. Chloe laughs too, looking visibly relieved. She slumps back into the booth, beaming playfully and knocking her foot against mine beneath the table. Ow! Bitch! I know! Not bad, right? Chloe grins at me like we're kids again, like we're sharing a secret. I'm secretly gay. Just kidding, that's not really a secret, is it? Even though I've been back in Arcadia Bay for a year now, oh, there's something about being on the receiving end of her smiles again that still kind of takes my breath away. I oh, big home sapien. I can tell I'm staring at her with what must be the dopiest look on my face, but I can't help it. Deliberately, I drag my eyes from her face and scan the diner, licking my lips. <laughs> you hungry? God, yes. Ooh, serious face on today. Chloe cranes her neck dramatically, looking around the diner. Where's Joyce anyway? I'm gonna die of starvation before she even takes my order. Then she'll be childless, and you'll be partnerless, and my sad, hungry ghost will forever be bound to the two whales! Cursed to haunt greasy truckers and painfully slow waitstaff for eternity. N not so fast, Casper. I kick her lightly beneath the table and continue despite the interruption. Joyce should be out with your food in a minute. It's like flipping a switch. Chloe's face lights up, the previous conversation immediately stricken from her memory. 
She leans forward, seizing my hands in hers and dragging them across the table, all over her face and stuff. Max, you've been my best friend since we were kids. My first mate, my partner in crime, and now the girl who buys me breakfast. Oh, shit! I'm ready to take the next step. I'm ready too, Chloe. Max, will you do me the great honor of marrying me and buying me food for the rest of our lives? She's been doing this more and more lately, saying things that could just be joking, but could also be, well, kind of gay, flirting. <laughs> I just can't figure out if Chloe's being deliberately confusing or if I'm such a colossal social dunce that I can't tell the difference. Chloe waggles her eyebrows, squeezing my hands playfully. Max? I laugh awkwardly, <laughs> feeling a blush rise on my face and yank my hands out of her grip. Oh, homo sapien, who said I'm buying? Chloe pouts, bottom lip jutting out dramatically. You know, I did just offer to spend the rest of my life with you. The least you could do is offer to pay for my... Wait, what did you get me? One short stack coming up. Chloe nods appreciatively, face breaking out into a slow grin. Not bad, Caulfield. Not bad. <laughs> Joyce bustles out of the kitchen a few minutes later, expertly balancing trays loaded with breakfast foods. Chloe smirks mischievously, leaning forward in the booth. No doubt with something cheerfully antagonistic on the tip of her tongue, but the morning rush is so hectic that Joyce barely has time to set our plates down in front of us before tearing off across the restaurant to attend the family of five that just filled up the last free booth. Booooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooo
Her tone is light, but the look on her face makes me feel like I didn't say quite the right thing! My first mate. My partner in crime. The girl I buy breakfast for. Chloe's face breaks out in a wide grin. Cheeks pink! In that case, can I order another? No! No! Chloe laughs. Worth a shot. Aww. So I guess we better get started on this thing. The rules say you need to take your photos somewhere in Arcady Bay. Do you know where you want to go? I don't fucking know! Let me think. Where would be a good place to take photos and laugh the strange like? The junkyard. Ah, <laughs> no. hey, you decide. Actually, why don't you tell me where you- Why don't you tell me where you want to go? Oh, we just fucking vanished, mate! Mate! Chloe had pulled the beanie off her head and tugged it down over my eyes. As soon as we got into the truck, I'd wanted to pull it off, but she levied the vague threat of swift retribution against me. You can tell it's serious because it's a capital S and a capital R. Remembering all the retaliatory <laughs> pranks she had unleashed on those who had dared to oppose her in our childhood, I decided to play along. Even when my eyes covered, I felt the excitement radiating off of her for the entire drive. I can't deny I'm eager to see what Chloe has in store when the truck finally rolls to a stop. Sit tight. Made it creepy, didn't I? <laughs> I hear the car door open and close. Then a moment later, I feel the door on my side open. She leans across my body. Unbuckling my seatbelt for me and wrapping a hand around my elbow to guide me out of the cabin. I stumble anyway, my clumsiness trumping Chloe's best efforts to help me. She catches my weight against her body, steadying me with one hand on my hip, the other still gripping my arm. Whoa there. Sorry. I can feel myself blushing, for once grateful that the beanie obscures so much of my face. You okay? Her voice is so close and quiet. The gentle pressure of her fingers against my hip makes my heart beat faster, and I nod dumbly. You ready? A fluttery feeling blooms in the pit of my stomach. I'm excited too. Stomach. Stomach. Yeah. I knew we'd fucking go in the junkyard. <laughs> Chloe yonks. The beanie off my head and I squint against the sudden explosion of light. Oh. I look around, taking in the heaps of rusted metal, the scraggly weeds, the towering evergreens looming in the background. It's... Amazing. Wow, Chloe. It's dorky, but I'm actually kind of awestruck by the atmosphere of the place. Have we not been here before then in this in this iteration of whatever is occurring? There are so many things around. <clears throat> Old vehicles, decommissioned signs, busted appliances. Everything with its own story, each piece a unique offering. This place is perfect. This place doesn't do, doesn't look like your your bedroom. This doesn't look like your your your, be, your bedroom. Chloe beams at me moving her hands in her back pockets and rocking on her heels. You think so? Yeah. God. I could get so many cool shots here. I'm so glad you can see it, you know. The potential here. Chloe trails off. Looking thoughtful. After a beat of silence- Bollocks! My cat's here. <laughs> After a beat of silence, she turns around, fixing me with a mischievous smirk. Let me show you around. Chloe takes off with a little skip, grabbing the sleeve of my sweater and pulling me behind her. I'm ga I, I don't think we're gonna get- we're, we ain't gonna get any teddy right now. Ain't gonna get no boobies right now, girl. She leads me on a whirlwind tour around the yard. We weave between stacks of rusted out car bodies, pick our way carefully through jagged metal and broken glass, around a field of dented metal drums and old tires and rebar. It doesn't take long for me to start to understand just what Chloe loves about this place. There's a sort of serenity here, among all the wrecks and the refuse. It's kind of beautiful. Chloe drags me over to an old trawler and offers to boost me up over the side. I decline, that thing looks like tetanus waiting to happen. But Chloe just shrugs and hauls herself up over the side with a cheerful disregard for her own personal safety. She struts around atop the boat, posing and flexing, mugging for the camera like the charismatic jerk she is when I fall back to snap a few for us. Oh no! It's the dread pirate Bluebeard! Here to plunder Arcadia Bay! Arr! Chloe's pirate impression is as hilariously bad as ever, and I can't help but laugh. Mockingly! <laughs> Chloe rolls her eyes, offended, and casually flips me off. Shut up, landlubber! Don't think it won't make you walk the plank, you dirty scallywag! She walks to the tip of the bow and kicks over a chair, propping a leg up on the upturned seat. Fuck that bluebeard shat! Call me Captain Morgan! 
Morgan. Interesting. I snap another photo, grinning. Captain Morgay. <laughs> Good job, Max. I'm proud of you, girl. She laughs and hops down without warning, tossing me one of the metal's curtain. Reading is hard. Tossing me one of the metal curtain rods she had been waving around atop the trawler. What's this? Your sword and guard. She takes a slow swing at me, and I react on instinct, deflecting the blow with my curtain rod and leading us into a full-blown sword fight. Holy crap. She swings again, and I react on instinct once again, instinctively, do 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 deflecting the blow with my curtain instinct rod. And it's bizarre, because we've done this dozens of times. But we're grown-ups now, but somehow playing pirates with my best friend is still easier than breathing. For as much as she's changed, for all the hair dye and the tattoos and the weed smoke and the occasional bad attitude and fannies and boobs and all that stuff, there are things about Chloe that are just fundamental. Like, she can still make the dumbest, goofiest shit still seem fun and exciting. Her laugh still makes my heart skip. Her smile still warms him up from the inside. And she still gets way too cocky in a sword fight, leaving herself wide open. I faint to the right, almost feeling bad when she lunges predictably away, defense slipping. Almost. 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 There we are. Well done. Chloe's eyes widen as my neck swing comes down. She knows she's gonna get sent straight to David Jones' locker. Frantically, she tries to dodge but ends up tripping over a stack of tires and landing right on her ass. Ha! Damn, girl. She sinks back into the pile of rubber and defeat, breathing heavily. I grin, feeling a trickle of sweat roll down my temple. Fucking, you know what I have to deal with right now? This joker. Just put himself on my lap. He's fucking huge! Please. I grin, feeling a trickle of sweat down my temple. Hey Chloe, maybe we should stop. You're looking pretty. Max, don't say it. Tired! <laughs> Chloe groans and rolls out onto her side. Slowly, she pushes herself into a standing position, patting down her pockets. I'm not high enough to deal with this right now. Come with me. She leads me around a cinder block shed, along some train tracks and back into the junkyard, to a clearing behind the school bus. She hops up onto the hood of an old car, patting the spot next to her and sparking up a joint. The metal is warm from the sun as I take my seat beside her. We're sitting so close, I can feel her pinky brush against mine on the hood of the car. <laughs> Tentatively, I reach over and hook my finger over hers watching the slow smile that spills across her face in response. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad you wanted me to help you, Max. I already told you, there's no one else I'd rather have helping me with this. Aww. Chloe speaks through a puff of smoke, looking out towards the trees. I know. Not just because of that, though. I knew you'd be busy with this project for the rest of the week, and I really wanted to spend time with you. Max, I'm lit. Girl! I feel like all the air has been sucked out of my lungs. What? Chloe winces and takes a hit off the joint to buy herself some time. I need to get out of here. I'm so sick of this town. I'm taking off at the end of the week. I just need to go someplace else for a while. You're leaving? Yay, why? 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 I'm only for a couple of days. Or weeks. Look, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm coming back, alright? Chloe glances over at me, worrying her bottom lip nervously. She takes another hit, holds it in her lungs for longer than seems normal. She speaks again through a cloud of smoke, voice raspy and uneven. Okay. Yeah, okay. I get it. Chloe takes another hit, laughing as she inhales. The smoke twists and curls around her face. No, you don't. The smoke precipitates, and it's just the two of us again. Chloe holds my gaze for a second, but we're staring at the remains of the joint between her fingertips. Dismayed. Okay, I, I don't- I, I don't get it. You- she sure- she sure told me I- <laughs> Chloe flicks what's left of the joint into the dirt in front of us and drags her hands nervously down her thighs. I really thought it would be not- not her thigh this time. <laughs> but what? But that doesn't matter. If this means mu this much to you, then that should be enough. I trust you. Chloe clears her throat, drumming her fingertips restlessly against her clothed legs. It does though. Matt's remain. I mean, this isn't just some spur of the moment decision or anything. I mean, yeah, I want you to get it. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you even tell? What do you, what do you, what? Girl. Even after all this time, it takes so much courage for her to be vulnerable like this. I slide over on the hood of the car without thinking, pulling her fidgety hands into my lap and covering them with my own. So help me understand. 
Chloe takes a deep breath and turns her head towards me, and suddenly we're nose to nose! Gay! Her eyes widen just a fraction, and I know I'm not imagining the way her breath gets a little shallower. I'm frozen in place. A particularly shrill bird call from the distance rips through the tension, and Chloe tips forward, laughing, until her forehead hits my shoulder. I roll my eyes and try to push her off, but she just leans into me harder until I give up and let her guide me onto my back. Dos mio! Gay! My heart's racing, but I'm laughing too, and at least from this angle, she can't see how red my face is. After a few moments, her giggles die away, and we let the silence linger. The weight of the sun overhead, and Clo of Chloe's body next to me, of the conversation we're waiting to have, pressing down once. <laughs> The weight of the sun overhead, of Chloe's body next to me, of the conversation we're waiting to have, presses down around me. She sits up, pulling me with her. I've never been out of Arcadia Bay, Max. Oh my god, that's boring. And sometimes it feels like I'll never be able to. And that's terrifying. I don't expect you to really understand. But I need you to trust that this is what I need right now, okay? I mean, I, I said I, I did. I... Literally, it's all I've been saying! It's fine, don't worry about it! <laughs> it's rare to see Chloe so earnest. Oh, cute though. I smile despite the lump in my throat, the tightness in my chest. We're gonna miss you, Chloe! Okay. Uh. Chloe slumps forward a little, relieved, and I finally get how tense she was before. Jeez Louise! This must have been eating her up! I reach out and take her hand again and she perks up a little, shooting me a small but earnest smile. Guess we'd better get to school, huh? I smile back, squeezing her hand as she slides off the hood of the car and pulls me to my feet. Get yo. Her hand in mine is warm. I hold it for as long as I can. Gay <laughs> Thanks for playing Life is Strange, Love is Strange demo. If you'd like to leave feedback for the team, Go do that over there. Look for the final version. Love for romance roots. I believe you can romance, obviously, Chloe. You can actually Rachel and I think Kate as well. Who else can you romance? Wait a minute, this is important. Victoria! Can I romance Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Anyway. This was pretty gay, I do hope you have enjoyed this. Be sure to go and check out the Love is Strange demo on the, uh, well, I mean, you can play through it again yourself using the links down below. Give us some feedback, help the dev team out. This is cool and completely fan everything. They're just fans and they're just going through this with willpower alone. I really did enjoy this and I hope you did too. And if you did, drop a like, share it with your friends if you think they'll have a laugh. Share it with them if you don't think they will. It'll be funnier to see their disgusted and terrible reactions. Check out other stuff on my channel, but most importantly, take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon, my friends. Bye bye You got your horrible and awfully sexy. I gave you the right. Who said you could do that? Ugh, Victoria, you saucy mix. Just step on my face. Whoa! Goodness me. You know what's really funny? Because I needed to burp, actually. <laughs> and it, the, <laughs> the cut happened just as I was, like, gonna burp, so it was like... <laughs> Last episode, we were flirting with um, this guy, and it seems like Zoe wants to get a hold of his German sausage. Don't know if he's German. Sorry if you're German and sausages offend you. Sorry if you're a sausage and Germans offend you. 